it's a stop now totally no it is it is raining i mean even now it was raining little while ago it was raining yeah captain sir live streaming started what is the time now 5:59 good uh the busy shall we go i'll brief about mma even by the time 2 3 minutes i think we'll get yeah, okay perfect, perfect. Yeah. please go ahead yeah. Uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, very warm welcome to another edition of our evening thing. As the things are going bad uh, at some of the cities, uh, not to worry. Keep engaging yourself, keep learning, and things will become all right. Uh, uh, there's so many good news coming. Uh, the, the vaccine is being found at so many places. I only wish it comes true so that we all get back to normalcy. And I am quite sure we all pray for each one of us' safety and security. So before I call upon one of the outstanding sessions, what you are going to have. Uh, leading virtually in the times of covid because things are happening virtually and better we learn what's uh, happening and we have got one of the outstanding uh, globally renowned speaker devashish shaka is going to be talking to you soon and let me in the meanwhile uh, briefly tell you what's happening in the mma so that you don't miss them and on the saturday 4th that is the day after tomorrow we have a talk on covid and the global economy we have one of the outstanding outstanding gentlemen who professor will be talking to us professor gautam maguja he is a professor of management and organization and he is also from carnell university usa he is uh, from bloomberg is the youngest professor who has been awarded uh, for his research he is also the professor who has been chosen by the students as an outstanding professor in usa he is a professor who has been awarded the outstanding professor by 1000 years old university in italy which very rarely recognize a professor from outside so i can keep going keep going but i can tell you you should not miss this talk which is happening uh, day after tomorrow at 4 o'clock uh, uh, professor gautam mahuja we are bringing it to you exclusively for you another thing we want to tell you this is not available to viewers on youtube and facebook it's available only on zoom you can try and log in zoom because we increase the number of zoom and also is available at live webinar because there are certain restrictions imposed by some of the organizations we have to do that uh, please bear with us sorry for the inconvenience repeat this is available not available on youtube and facebook uh, you want to watch uh, professor gautam maguja log in to zoom or uh, our mma webinar and another thing this recording will also not be available to your future because certain restrictions we have to follow based on the wishes of the uh, speaker so don't miss watch live uh, professor gautam maguja is going to be talking to you day after tomorrow on covid and the global economy then on the 10th mma flagship event annual meeting and this time uh, maybe first time in the history of mma last 65 years 66 years we are doing a mma online agm i think that again also we have gone virtual and uh, we expect a large number of mma members to participate and uh, uh, sanjay kirloskar chairman and managing director of kirloskar uh, Uh, brothers limited has kindly agreed to be the chief guest and he'll be del delivering the keynote address please do watch uh, the the open session is from 6 to 7 and 7 to 8 is a business session do watch it'll going to be interesting again on the 11th of saturday we have an outstanding event again very interesting out of box thinking event reinventing yourself starting in your 50s and productive post formal retirement life many of us don't plan a retirement life i'm not talking about retirement life post in terms of your financial management no at the age of 50 you plan your retirement life many will do extremely well because so much you have gained over a period of 30 40 years of your service while in service and why should you waste all this uh, thing what you learned you become a lifelong learner and three outstanding uh, speakers panelists who are going to be discussing this is mr balraman from the managing director of uh, fans limited and mr lakshmi narayan pandit is a founder and executive of pinnacle uh, leadership consulting and former managing director of hl yes hl limited and is also a, a coach and nand nand kishore is a professor of indian school of business and also head of asia africa and uh, oceania and nestle so they are going to tell how they have planned the future and how they are able to contribute immensely to the society post retirement also at the time keep yourself busy i think you all should watch i would urge upon everybody today 50 is the age what we have selected but i know today people at 30s and 40s thinking about retirement so you do watch you'll know how to do it from 30 onwards okay then on the 18th again we have outstanding speaker talking to you and i will walk miles to listen to him mr anand kripalu anand kripalu is md and ceo of digio uh, digio uh, and he is also member of the global uh, digio executive committee and he is going to be talking to us my leadership journey and key lessons from pons to leading to three kinds of different businessmen digio you know one of the largest manufacturer of liquor in the world and uh, this gentleman to come and speak worked in different atmosphere sharing his success story how he adapted himself and how he got himself you know adjust to the various type of environment and different difficult businesses in the world i think it's worth listening to him not to miss it's happening on the 18th uh, at 6 pm on 25th again 
satyanarayana ramurthy uh, partner head of uh, infrastructure uh, from uh, kpmg singapore he going to be talking to us on leadership lessons from working in partnership environment when you are working virtual today is the time you have to work in partnership collaboration is the order of the day today and you should understand how the partnership works and how various you know ingredients of which you require for a great partnership and you can listen to him from one of the heads of kpmg who advises worldwide on partnership then on 31st we have a brand value management series with uh, governance uh, last month you had with suresh narayan managing director of nestle spoke to us this month again an outstanding speaker shailesh arbakti chartered accountant board and audit committee member independent director evangelist economist he is also one of the outstanding known chartered accountant in india he is from bombay he will be talking to us on brand value management series and governance we have number of other events we are all, almost final the event till uh, december but i will tell, tell you two more events uh, which we are doing on 3rd and 4th of august i don't want to take too much of time i'm waiting for the people to log in so that they don't miss uh, the, the the grand opening introduction of uh, debashish that's why i'm taking, going to take one more minute uh, and uh, on the 3rd of uh, this month we are having on mr bk singal who is a father of internet in india and also is a, is a revolutionized internet and he is also a former head of vsnl bsnl and also jio he going to be talking to us the subject is is on the happening on the 4th of august uh, the telecom man and uh, along with him we have uh, sandeepan uh, he is also independent director author he is from iit karakpur i am kalkata they both are going to be talking to us on telecom revolution what's happening in today's world then we have on the 5th of august by mr streeter uh, i am not uh, creative Uh, he's again a brilliant innovator. Uh, he's also a coach, author, speaker. He's going to be talking. So I'm going to stop with this because there are so many events happening. Uh, you mark this in your calendar and not to miss these events. And uh, most of the events are available for you, except Professor Gautam Ahuja's talk is not available to you. That's why I keep reminding you: if you want to listen to one of the outstanding professors, I I, I can tell you I had an interaction with him yesterday last evening on various formalities how to go about that. Twenty minutes of talk. I I can tell you in my own. Within 40 years of my MMA, is so inspiring to listen. Outstanding, outstanding. So I urge upon you to not to miss uh, Gautam Ahuja. It's happening on coming Saturday. Coming to today's event, leading virtually in the times of COVID-19, very, very apt, very relevant. Uh, Debushi Shakar is not new to you. You know him very well. He's you know delivered one of the outstanding talks a uh, uh, few days back, and uh, uh, we when we requested him again, he was so willingly come forward to talk to us because he's a technocrat man and he's. what around the world let me have the privilege of introducing debashish before i request him to speak to you on the subject which he has chosen to speak to you today debashish is a founder and managing partner of the proliferators advisory and consulting uh, services he is globally recognized for his thought leadership on making business customers centric and operationally efficient he has advised clients all over the world including india middle east africa china and also europe author of several books and is a regular contributor to economic times uh, then number of other including the pex network and it is a uh, pleasure debashish is here with us and we are all looking forward eagerly to listen to your inspiring talk or to the debashish and as usual before i hand over finally to debashish if you have any questions please put it in your chat box otherwise do all the viewers watching this program live on youtube facebook and webinar Uh, there is a number uh, going as usual please send your number by whatsapp or sms to that number will be the more happy let me again once again warmly welcome all the viewers of mma watching this program and also the guests and invitees who are watching this program live uh, from youtube facebook and also webinar thank you so much and uh, over to debashish and looking forward to hearing your inspiring talk this evening over to you sir thank you group captain vijay kumar ji i think it's wonderful always to come back to mma and uh, you know share my thoughts so you know since world health organization announced the pandemic things seem to have changed around us remote working or work from home seems to have become the new normal in april tcs announced that 75% of its employees would work from home by 2025 immediately after that we heard we heard Jack Dorsey of Twitter announcing that employees of Twitter and Square to permanently work from home. After that, you know, we had Facebook. We heard Facebook, you know, allowing its employees to work from home, and then of course, you know, you had companies like Amazon, Google, Salesforce, you know, all telling their employees, you know, they can operate uh, from home, closer home. You know, if you really come down to India, you know, Marico. 
uh, announced that 40% of its employees would be working from home. And this is despite the fact that they have many factories and third party uh, operations. I was listening to Pramod Basin the other day, the founder of uh, Clicks Cap Capital. And he was telling us that all the employees of Clicks, Clicks Capital are working from home. And you know what they have done? 50% of their real estate, they have uh, surrendered. Today, you know, I read uh, this uh, news item and some of you would have seen it that uh, State, Bank, State Bank of India chairman talking about employees working from anywhere, just not working from home. And then, you know, Mercedes India, you know, is looking at three days office working and two days work from home. So virtually many organizations, especially those, you know, who are doing uh, knowledge work are working from home. But being remote can be a challenge. If you're managing a team, it's sometimes difficult to collaborate. You can, can't just talk down the hall and have a conversation with them or pull people together and have an impromptu meeting. Remote work has many challenges, but the good news is that organizations around the world are experimenting with creative solutions. So, you know, the structure of my conversation today, some ideas that I'm share. Four areas of the voice that we are hearing from employees. Second, uh, you know, I will talk about why do people feel the way they feel? Essentially, I'll talk about the psychology of, you know, employees. Then we'll get into the advantages and disadvantages of, you know, working virtually. And then I'll share with all an assorted set of practices, which, you know, you can apply. So what are the various voices that, you know, one is hearing? So, you know, there was this uh, interesting survey by Blind. As many of you are aware, Blind is a trusted community where verified professionals connect to discuss what matters most. Professionals anonymously communicate in private company channels and openly with users all across. So the question that they were asked, and this is a global survey, just not a, a survey which pertains to India. You know, the question that they were asked that, what is the impact of work from home? And, you know, there are three things which stood out. Around 53% of the people surveyed says, said that they are facing loneliness. Around 56% of the people they are say, said that they, have, they, are, they are feeling anxiety. And around 53% of people said that, you know, there are many people that, that, that they are facing mental health issues. You know what, I stay in a place, I stay in Bombay, and what I hear unofficially that there are many youngsters, they are going through severe mental health issues, and it's really not reported. So th this is something that, you know, we as leaders, employers, whatever, we need to keep in mind. There was another global survey, you know, which was done by, you know, Paolo Deniglo. Uh, she's uh, associated with Harvard uh, Kennedy School. And, you know, uh, she surveyed employees all over the world. And there are five voices which came out, which is on your slide. I'll just read out. Uh, the first thing, and, and her question was, what are the broad expectations which employees have from organizations? So the first thing that the employees said that they essentially wanted to know from business leaders, how are they really going to navigate the pandemic? I think that was the first point. The second thing that uh, they said that they want to feel a sense of safety and security about the future of their jobs. Uh, then the third thing, what they said, they wanted right information to be provided in a helpful way by the right person. Uh, then of course, the fourth one was they wanted to, they want to feel that their organization cared about their well-being. And last but not the least, very, very interesting. You know, the, the expectation, uh, what the employees have, that expectations around productivity and billing should not be same as during normal times. So I think we should just keep these voices in mind as we really uh, go through uh, the presentation. Now, let's really uh, get into a bit of psychology and understand, you know, why do employees feel the way they feel? So, you know, uh, there is this interesting research uh, which has been done by this lady called Susan Pinker. 
And some of you probably are familiar with Susan Pinker. Uh, Susan Pinker regularly writes in Wall Street Journal, New York Times. And she came out with a best-selling book some time back, and maybe some of you have read it. It's called The Village Effect. The Village Effect is, is essentially a delves on what is it that really give, gives longevity to people. So you know what? Pinker argues the movement towards communicating through technology stands in the way of our most basic biological necessities. What she says that face-to-face -face interaction causes the release of oxytocin hormone that is released in women breastfeeding to bond with their babies. So when women, when people connect uh, physically, maybe through a handshake, a pat on the back, or a high five, high five, oxytocin is released promoting feelings of attachment and trust, facilitating greater collaboration among team members. So our thesis is very simple that if you're working from virtually, you know, oxytocin will not get released and that can really impact the camaraderie which needs to get built between team members. Uh, in order to process nonverbal cues, being on a video call requires more focus than face-to-face. -face. Video chats mean we need to work harder to process nonverbal cues like facial expressions, the tone and the pitch of the voice, and body language. Paying more attention to these consume a lot of energy. Our minds are together when our bodies feel we are not. That dissonance, which causes people to have conflict, you cannot relax into a conversation naturally. So, you know, you have this perennial feeling that, am I really able to read that person? My mind is telling me something, but I'm not able to read the body language. So that creates a lot of stress on people communicating virtually. The third thing uh, which uh, we need to keep in mind is silence actually causes anxiety. You know, uh, silence creates a natural rhythm in real life conversation. And, and, you know, if you really hear people like Barack Obama, you know, they are masters of pauses. And, you know, they will use pauses in an effective way and mesmer mesmerize the audience. However, when it happens in a video call, you become anxious about the technology. It also makes you feel uncomfortable. And there is a research around it. So in 2014, there was this research done by an academician in you know, University of Wuppertal in Germany, which showed that delays on phone or conferencing systems shaped our views of people negatively. Even delays of 1.2 seconds made people perceive the responder as less friendly or focused. So, you know, if there is a delay during virtual uh, conversation, communication, this is also a reason which really puts stress on employees. Then, of course, the feeling that we are being watched. When you're on a video call, you know everybody's looking at you. You are on stage, so there comes the social pressure and feeling like you need to perform, right? So you have so many screens in front of you and you know, there's so much of pressure and being performative is nerve wracking and very stressful. It's also very hard for people not look at their own face if they can see it on the screen or not to be conscious of how they behave in front of the camera. So two things that happen, there are so many faces which are there so, you know, this perennial feeling that am I being judged? And then on the other side, you have your own screen. You, you look at it and then you feel that am I looking good? So, you know, all these are, uh, they, they silently cause stress in employees. Then, you know, there is something called the self-complexity theory. I mean, this is uh, from psychology. Maybe some of you are aware. The self-complexity theory posits that individuals have multiple aspects context-driven social roles, relationships, activities, and goals. When these aspects are reduced, we become more vulnerable to negative feelings. So what does this simply mean? It means each one of us have 
different personas. So when I'm interacting with my colleagues in office, I will have a different persona. When I'm interacting with my parents, I'll have a different persona. When I'm interacting with my friends, I'll have a different persona. When I'm interacting with my child, I'll have a different persona. Now, what's happening when you are working from home? You're doing everything from home, right? You are, you are doing your work, office work, you are taking care of parents, you are taking care of children. So, at, so maybe at this moment, you know, you are on an office call with a certain sort of persona. The next very moment, you need to go to the next room and take care of your parents with a different set of persona. The very next moment, maybe you need to interact with your child with a different persona. So, you know, when you start shifting your personas, this also created a lot of psychological pressure on employees. Then, you know, I keep on hearing from many leaders who say that a bit of pressure is fine. You know, it will really uh, help to improve the performance. And that's where, you know, I tell them that you really need to look at something called the Yerkes Dutson's Law. So what is Yerkes Dutson's Law? According to, what, uh, according to this law, performance increases, uh, increases psychology uh, with psychological or mental arousal, but only up to a certain point. When the level of stress becomes too high, performance decreases. So if you really look at this graph over here, on the y-axis, you have performance, and in the x-axis, you have arousal. So, you know, when, you are, when, you are, when your uh, arousal goes to a certain level, or when, when you are in a pressure till a certain level, only, only ten then, till then your performance increases. Beyond that certain threshold, your performance just dips. And this is what bosses, managers, business leaders keep, need to keep in mind. And this is probably, probably the reason, you know, when you drive change, a burning platform sort of paradigm doesn't work many times because, you know, it creates excessive stress and impacts performance of employees. Then, of course, you know, uh, we all know, you know, because the economy is not doing well, things are, we are not sure about our business. You know, employees are worried about their economy and job losses. And they are putting higher expectations on themselves due to worries over economy, furloughs, and job losses. There is also this heightened sense of, I need to be per performing at my top level in this, in this situation. So this is actually creating so much of pressure, so much of stress, which we probably don't realize today. Maybe the impact we'll only get to know after a couple of months. And then, of course, you know, this issue of distraction at home. You know, today at home, we as uh, uh, people who are working from home, we are doing so many things, right? We are, we, are, we, are, we are working from home. We are gymming from home. We are taking care of our parents. We are taking care of children. So there is so much of distraction. So let me tell you what I mean by this is that Let's say I'm on, a, I'm, a, I'm on a Zoom call talking to my colleagues or with my boss. But you know what? When I'm doing it, my mind may, may be tossing around thinking that the very next moment I need to go and feed my ailing parents. Or the thought could be going around that I need to take care of my little child who's, sit, who's just lying next to me. Or, you know, it could be as simple as a little child popping up when you are doing the conversation with your team. So, you know, there's a lot of distraction and, you know, at times it really puts us in a lot of embarrassment. So today, some of you would have seen that brilliant Twitter uh, state, uh, uh, somebody posted on Twitter wherein a lady was being interviewed by BBC. And then this little, her little daughter comes and disturbs us. And, and you know, that really spoils the entire interview. But, you know, it's very humorous, but, you know, when you really look at an employee, this can actually put a lot of stress and pressure because nobody really wants to be in an embarrassing position. And of course, the last uh, thing, you know, when you really talk, talk about uh, uh, psychology is about managing the paradox of work-life balance. So, you know, when it comes to work-life balance, remote work was, uh, uh, poses a paradox. On one hand, working from home cuts down on commuting and allows people to adjust their schedules and spend more time with their families. On the other hand, remote work has blurred the boundary between professional and personal life and can leave employees feeling 
like they must be available 24 by 7. And there are many research which really proves this. So there was this research which was done by Gallup just before the pandemic. And what they found out that when people work from home, they on an average log one extra hour. After the pandemic started, I think around April, NordVPN, you know, NordVPN, the Panama based, uh, based uh, VPN provider, they did a global survey. And what they found out that because people are working from home, on an average, people are spending two to three hours more than what they would normally do. For example, I was talking to one of my colleagues. Uh, he uh, used to work for me in one of my earlier jobs. And today he works at a middle management level in a logistics firm. So I was asking, asking him about his work schedule. So he was telling me that earlier, you know, when he worked from office, he worked for around 10 to 12 hours. But today he told me that it's around 13, 14 hours that he really needs to log in. And he just says that, I just don't know how it happens. You know, work just comes from one corner and, you know, you just tend to work even during weekends. So, you know, this working from home, of course, has a lot many challenges. And this is something that we need to keep in mind as we really uh, go about managing our teams. Now, so what are the advantages and disadvantages? Let me tell you, working from home, home has many, dis uh, many advantages. And uh, that's something that uh, we really need to uh, keep in mind. So I'm going to talk about uh, 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 some of those points. So this is based on the research done by Professor Lee Thompson. And some of you would be knowing, uh, she's, uh, she's a very well-known professor of uh, negotiation and wor wor uh, works in the space of virtual working. So, you know, she's come with a whole host of advantages of working from home. And I've just listed some of them. The first thing, first advantage, you know, of working from home is that you tend to become more task focused. Uh, I mean, you get down to business. So what does, what does this essentially mean? So let's say your meeting starts at eight o'clock. So, you know, uh, and it's going to be a Zoom call. Typically what happens, the meeting would start at eight o'clock and people would not really squander time chit-chatting, you know, being outside the conference room. So, you know, the tendency of people to get down to business is much higher when you work from home. The second thing, what she says is, as she, as she calls it, we get strong effect, reduce status, status difference. So when you are uh, working in an office and let's say you are having a meeting, so what typically happens that, you know, your boss sits in one corner and then are people sitting all over. So, you know, there is this silent status difference. But when you're working from home, nothing like that happens. Everybody's picture is on the screen. So, you know, it actually reduces status difference and hierarchy. The third one is the lesser need to conform. So whether it's your attire, whether it's what you want to say, you know, there are things that you would not do in front, but you may do when you are working virtually. And some of them we'll talk about a little later. And then of course, very, very important, there is less, lesser inhibition, lesser inhibition to many things about which we also would be talking. What are some of the disadvantages? And this is something that we need to know. First of all, you know, there is this cognitive, effective, motivational depletion. What does cogn cognition mean? All of you know it. Cognition essentially means thinking. Effective means it's about feelings and motivation. You guys know what it means. So, you know, when you work virtually, even, a, even if you have a meeting for a short period of time, it actually tires you. And you would have seen that even if you do a series of Zoom calls, maybe for three, four hours, after that, after that you are dead tired. And you may feel as if you are, you've worked for the entire day. So this is an example of cognitive, effective, and motivational depletion. Then the other issue that really happens is something called ODE, ODE or online disinhibition effect. So what this essentially means, you know, when people work virtually, they are much more intense than they would be in person. And let me give you an example what this means. You know, this will be manifested, for example, you know, they'll provide harsher feedback. So let's say you are doing a performance uh, review with your subordinate virtually, probably the feedback that you'll give uh, virtually will be much harsher than what you will do in person. Then there is also this chance wherein, you know, 
people threatening each other. And what do I mean by threatening each other? So, you know, when you are meeting in person, you would normally not really threaten anybody, but you know, you don't want mind doing it through an email when you are working virtually. And then of course, there are these issues of interpretation. So, you know, positive messages can be viewed as neutral, neutral messages can be perceived as negative. And then of course, there are these issues of around, you know, uh, ethical standards, you know, there is always fear that will people cheat, etc. So this is this entire stuff is called online disinhibition effect. And then this issue is, of course, the third issue is around lesser trust, because you do because you don't meet people in person. So you know, you find it very difficult to trust them. So what is really the solution? The solution here is, please trust your people till it's otherwise. I think that's the strategy that should be adopted. And of course, the last one, last uh, disadvantage I think we just talked about is the chances of, you know, misunderstanding happening is much higher when you are uh, working virtually. Now, when you're working virtually, there are two other things that you need to keep in mind. There is something called personal char uh, charisma and something called electronic charisma. So let me really talk about what I mean by personal charisma. So let's say, you know, you are talking to a, per, you're, you're talking to somebody in person and you want to influence that person. So, you know, what typically happens beyond the content, what I mean, beyond what you are telling, there are other things that you use to influence that person. It could be, you know, your voice, your, your stature, your mannerism, your looks, Paralingual example of paralinguistic gender, age, mirroring. So while you are influencing somebody in person, so when you're communicating, you just don't use your content. Content, I mean what you're seeing. You also use these other things to influence the other person. But when you are really talking about electronic charisma what really matters is content and this is something we need to remember especially you know if you are into sales and if you believe you know you will be in a position to sell your product just based on the 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 things beyond the content you may find it difficult to do it virtually also also you know if you want to collaborate with people if you want to in influence other people in the organization what will really matter is content. And this is something that we would need to, we would have to keep in mind. So what are some of the practices, you know, uh, that uh, we, we, we should follow? So I'm going to share with you all 16 practices. So the first one is share how your business will navigate the Can you check uh, his, uh, net connectivity? We have some issues. Sir, your audio is breaking. Hello. Your audio is breaking, sir. Tell me. Your audio and video is breaking, sir. Please I check. Think net has become quite low from your side. Is there any way you could improve uh, it? Otherwise, we'll move. Maybe we would like to try geo or. Going out. Uh, gentlemen, just bear with us. Uh, uh, he will come back again. Uh, log in, log out. I think the audio will improve now. Let's hope for. Yeah, unmute yourself, uh, Devachi. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Is this better now or is it still much, uh, much, much better? Strength five. Very good. Yeah, we'll just try again. I'm sorry about this. This. It is. I don't know where did I. Uh, uh, so uh, am I audible now? Uh, no, quite that? clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry about it, ladies and gentlemen. So, so we are essentially talking about certain practices, you know, that you may like to adopt, uh, you know, in your uh, organization. Uh, so the first thing that you should do, you should state how your business will navigate the pandemic. 
The first goal of any leader should be articulating clearly as possible the challenges your business faces and what steps are being taken to address them. For some companies, this could mean pivoting towards a new product or service in response to the pandemic, maybe producing a new diagnostic kit, for instance, or redeploying resources to make masks. For others, it could be efforts to conserve cash. And you know, there are three things that you may like to communicate to your employees. The first thing is tell employees what you know about the business. Again, I repeat, tell employees what you know about the business. Second, tell them what you don't know. The third thing that you should tell them, when will you get back to discuss what you don't know, right? By telling people what you don't know is the key to building credibility with your stakeholders. And there is this brilliant example, you know, uh, which was, uh, uh, which is provided by, uh, you know, uh, Marriott. So Marriott CEO, Arne Sorensen came up with a six minutes video, uh, you know, uh, uh, a month back, wherein he actually talks about what is it that Marriott would do to really navigate the crisis. So what's really brilliant about the video, I'm really not sharing over here because it'll take time. It's a six minutes video. In the video, you know, he's not only candid, he's vulnerable, he's humble, and very, very important, he's hopeful. So, you know, that is one of the great examples in the way a leader should really communicate when there is a pandemic and, you know, how you should go about navigating a business. So I would urge each one of you to have a look at the video when you have time. Uh, the next bit, uh, restate your vision. A strong and consistent company vision helps employees feel they are building something great and heading towards their purpose. If you have a vision and think it will stay the same after the pandemic, please tell your people of the long, arduous journey. As a leader, when you state and restate your vision, you provide stability and build trust the two major factors in inspiring and motivating people. And this becomes important, especially, you know, if there are doubts which employees have about the company. Restating vision really can energize the team and bring focus to what they are doing. Then, of course, the third one is understanding the nuances of context. When we are talking in person, we get to know the nuances and contextual signals as others, tone of voice, facial expressions, and body language to shape our decisions. Clearly, leaders need to find new ways of working to pick nuances and contextual signals. Today, there are really no ready-made playbooks. So you have to find ways to bring more nuances and contextual signals back to conversation. So as a leader, you have to go out of the way to find out those non-verbal clues, which, are, which the employees are really throwing up. And here are three suggestions which I want to make. The first one is make sure everyone's voice is heard in real time or offline. If some have concerns, they might not express before an online audience. Second, seek, seek feedback from different trusted participants on how they perceive how they perceived meetings and what they would do differently. And the third one, very important, rotate leaderships or have meetings run by individuals who are better able to pick up signals or solicit online participation. So I think, you know, we have to really keep our radars on to really understand how employees are reacting because you may not be in a position to really perceive it through a Zoom call or through a video or through a WhatsApp chat or through an email. Then the fourth one, you know, make sure your team is physically and very, very important, mentally prepared to work remotely. They need the required wherewithals as laptop, computers, proper internet connection or any other tool to function properly. Make sure everyone has a set up place in their home which will work as a workplace. This is to bring sense of normalcy and give a feeling of separation between their work and personal life. Each team member, uh, you know, needs that mental separation. So, you know, there are some things which businesses are doing is that, you know, 
managers are insisting their uh, subordinates to send an, a picture of the place from which, where they are working. So you know what, you could be staying in a small studio apartment in Mumbai, maybe a small one bedroom, all kitchen, and your office could be a, a corner of a bed. So what, not a problem, whatever it is, you know, it, it's important, you know, to encourage your employees to share that. And why, 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 should, why you may want to have a look because first, first you know, uh, it, you, you as a manager get an idea that is this person really set up properly for, for virtual work? So, you know, if the person needs a small table, maybe, you know, you, know, you can order a small table on Amazon and, and send it across. The other thing is, this is essentially a way to force mental separation. Unless you do this, people would just overwork nonstop because everything is blended together. Plus, right now, a lot of people are fearful of losing their jobs. I think we talked about it. So they are going to work extra hard to be visible and to make sure they are delivering. Nobody can keep that for very, very long. So, you know, when today many leaders tell me that they are very productive, their teams are doing very well, I always wonder, is it because people are going above and beyond to really do what they are supposed to do? So it's very, very important that, you know, companies have to make sure that employees are physically and mentally set up for work. So for that, if you need to supply laptop, computer, internet, please do that. For example, Twitter and Shopify, you know, they gave $100,000 to each employees. Even in India, I know many companies have given 5,000, 10,000 rupees to employees to really uh, support themselves. Uh, then, of course, the next bit is help staff to understand where they need to focus on. You know, this is a good time to initiate a discussion with your team around the different projects the company is working on and how they should be reprioritized. Don't assume that your entire staff knows what, that your company's priorities aren't the same as they were before. They are probably not. And you know, one of the things that I recommend that please tell your teams three to five areas that you think they should focus on. Because you know, that will bring in a lot of clarity and what typically happens when things are certain. You know, our minds, you know, there's something called tunnel vision. We become victims of tunnel vision. So, you know, we are not really able to think and we will always wonder what should we do? So if you are able to specify the top three to five areas that they need to work on, it will bring in a lot of clarity and make sure this is repeated in every meeting or whatever so that, you know, it's constantly reinforced in your employees. The next thing that I'm, I suggest, you know, you need to set ground rules around channels. You know, when people are working from home, it's important to cut through the noise. You don't want people to read emails all day, every day. I recommend you, you set ground rules on channels around low versus high frequency. For example, you know, you can use emails for lower urgency items that can be handled asynchronously. What is it? that essentially means wherein you don't want an instant action. Use text, WhatsApp, you know, for only high urgency items. And for calls, use calls, videos, wherein you want to have a conversation. The worst thing to happen is even for small messages, you know, you start using WhatsApp, et cetera. Because you know, many times we don't realize what goes through the employee. A small message can really spoil an employee's uh, a day. So I think we really need to be sensitive uh, of the type of communication that we are using and the type of channel. So you know, if you are able to really specify this, this will really be beneficial during a pandemic uh, like this. Then of course, send messages that, that emphasize we and us. So, you know, you see this picture on your slide. This is a picture of Paolo Demiglo, and I talked about her earlier. So she's associated with, you know, Harvard Kennedy School. And she did a very interesting piece of research, which I thought I should share with you. So, you know, when leaders use collective pronouns and languages such as we, us, and together to communicate, employees were 3.5 times more likely to feel a sense of safety. Second, they were five times more likely to provide moral support to co-workers compared with those who received messages emphasizing the personal pronouns I and me. 
So I think, you know, as leaders, managers, we have to make this conscious effort to really communicate E, V, together sort of messages. You know, it'll, it can really pump up your team and, you know, it can help them to focus on the work that you want them to work on. The next idea, which I wanted to leave with all of you that regular messaging from the top, you know, employees pay attention, more attention to certain messages than others. In a, in, in a crisis like this, maybe hearing from the CEO or, or maybe somebody from top, it could be the head of the function or maybe the country head every, mo every Monday morning. You know, it could either be via video message or could be a video call. And, you know, this can really be uh, impactful. Of course, you can also do things like fireside chat, or virtual town halls. And you know, your messaging should be on how the company is adapting to the new operating environment, what measures it is taking to support workers, and occasional updates on official health guidance can all contribute to a more fearless work, uh, workforce. So I think that regular communication from the top every week is very, very important. It can really help to build confidence of the team members. Then of course, the next one is keep critical messages simple. A critical thing to remember that in a pandemic like this is to keep messages simple, to the point and actionable. I again repeat, simple, to the point and actionable. And this is especially true for important messages. For example, you know, Walmart, uh, has come up uh, with something called a 6 20 100 guidance. Of course, this is for their retail outlet. So what they say that stand six feet away to maintain safe physical distance, take 20 seconds for good hand washing, and consider body temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the signal to stay home from public activity. Similarly, I was listening to the CEO of Metropolitan Healthcare, uh, the uh, other day, and she was also talking about, they have similar acronyms to communicate critical messages. So you know what, what I would urge all of you that, you know, if there are critical messages, you know, you can find creative ways to really communicate so that it really sticks to people's mind. The next one is highlight the do's and not the don'ts. Highlight the do's and not the don'ts. And you know why people tend to pay more attention to positively framed information. This is because negative information erodes trust. Now, what this essentially means is frame instructions. I again repeat, frame instructions as do's and do's could be you know, your best practices, benefits rather than don'ts. And don'ts could be what people should not do or debunking myths. So, you know, uh, uh, there is some very interesting research around it. You know, in the previous uh, epidemic outbreak, outbreaks such as Zika, yellow fever, West Nile virus, research shows that interventions highlighting best practices were more effective than those focused on countering misinformation or conspiracies. So, you know, your focus should be to focus more on the do's and minimize on the don'ts. The 11th idea, which I wanted to leave all, all of you is don't communicate stress and helplessness. When a leader communicates stress and helplessness, this is a trickle down effect on employees. Effective leaders take a two pronged approach. The first one is they acknowledge there is stress and anxiety that employees may be feeling in different circumstances, but also providing affirmation, affirmation of confidence in their teams. So, you know, whatever be the condition of business, please don't communicate helplessness and desperation. You have to always put on a positive facade. Of course, you have to communicate the truth. So, you know, it, it's important to use phrases like, we have got to achieve this. This is tough, but I know we can handle it. Or, you know, you could just say, let's look for ways to use our strengths during this time. With this support, employees are more likely to take up the challenge with a sense of purpose and focus. So never really communicate helplessness and stress as a leader. Uh, twelfth idea, uh, you know, uh, encourage employees to share their new norms. 
during a crisis like this, when there is so much of stress of uh, to employees, it helps to co-create the schedule of employees. I repeat, it helps to co-create the schedule of employees. This could be done by asking, you know, employees to share blocks of time when they will be on and when they will be off. Then share the schedule with team members to manage expectations and schedule. And actions like this helps to reduce employee anxiety. And most important, it actually builds in a lot of trust because, you know, employees realize that the company really cares for me and, you know, takes my inputs when a schedule is made. And, you know, it also takes care of my time when I'm not available for the organization. The three questions which every leader should ask, uh, you know, uh, there are three questions I believe, you know, all of us should really ask uh, of our employees. The first question that, you know, you should ask is, how are you doing right now? I repeat, the question is, how are you doing right now? This question acknowledges that our answers are changing minute by minute, because, you know, things are certain. You never know tomorrow somebody may fall ill. So that's the reason the question, how are you doing right now? The second question is, what's keeping you up at night? And this question really lets you hear what is up on someone's plate right now and that they are trying to solve for. And of course, the last question, in what ways can I support you right now? So the three questions that you may like to ask of your employees, how are you doing right now? What's keeping you up at night? And in what ways can I support you right now? One suggestion, please don't ask questions such as, how can I help you? This is because it suggests that you have a deficit or deficiency. So it may appear very silly and subtle, but it actually impacts the employee. So I think as leaders, we need to keep that in mind. The 14th idea is give opportunity to employees to solve problems. To explain this, you know, I'll show you this, uh, this bar chart that you see uh, on your slide. So this is based on a research which was done by uh, Lindsay McGregor et al and published in HBR uh, some time back. So, you know, if you see on the left side, the green bar, this essentially shows when people had no choice on where to work and the blue one, blue one is when people has choice on where to work. So the whole story is, the whole research is, irrespective of where people worked, when they were not allowed to experiment or when they were not involved in solving problems, their motivation levels were low. But when you allow people to solve problems, their motivation levels went up. So I think the takeaway for all of us here is that, you know, even if you are doing a repetitive work, even if you are doing something which is transactional, I would urge, please keep aside 15 to 20% of time wherein, you know, you make people solve problems. I think, you know, what happens when you make people certain pro solve problems you know, it would facilitate collaboration. It will also help to take their creative energy. And this can help to really boost engagement. So please keep, them, uh, keep this in mind. Just don't think that, you know, if there's something transactional and you pay them, they'll be engaged. So, you know, together with what they do, try and keep aside some time and help them, uh, nudge them to solve certain problems. Of course, for that, some training, et cetera, may be required, which you may want to provide. Then, of course, the fifth idea is schedule time for serendipitous collaboration. What does the word serendipity mean? So as all of you know, it essentially means occurrence of an event by chance. So this is, of course, taken from, you know, Steve Jobs' world. So Steve Jobs uh, was a, uh, was a famous opponent of remote work, believing that Apple employees' best work came from accidentally bumping into other people, not sitting at home in front of an email inbox. So you know what he would typically say? Creativity comes from spontaneous meetings, from random discussions. So you run into someone, you ask what they are doing, you say, wow, and soon you are cooking up on all sorts of ideas. You know, the reason why tech companies have these micro kitchens wherein they provide lavish food, 
day night it's not because people cannot afford you know this is essentially done because this is where you get your employees the moments of serendipity and that's the reason you know you know you have these facebooks of this world providing free lunch free dinner that's the intent now in a pandemic like this this really becomes difficult so scheduling time for serendipity uh, serendipitous collaboration is important when we work remotely we miss out on all impromptu moments with our colleagues that lead to good ideas such as you know chatting before and after the meetings catching up, catching up in the pantry or hallway and stopping by each other's desks hence when meeting via phone or maybe via video schedule time for informal conversation at the beginning or at the end of the meetings or you know it could be as simple as having lunch meetings together or having some team activity together so essentially giving this informal moments wherein people can come together not for work and you know it provides that opportunity for serendipitous collaboration and of course the last idea is bring office home now what does this mean as teams are working from home there is this conversation to bring office near their homes what this means is instead of having large offices have small offices in various localities for employees to meet these offices are going to be small with conference rooms so that teams can meet once a fortnight or as and when required for example if you are in bombay and i work for a large company so the company today if it has a large corporate office it will not have a large corporate office going forward it will be a very small corporate office then it will set up small offices let's say in andheri another in thane the other in kafpuri and these small offices would just have conference rooms and what is the pop, uh, purpose of these uh, offices it's essentially for the people who are working from home to come and meet on you know maybe team building activities to do alignment etc the other thing which is being conversed is that if you're not really able to set up office try and use we work sort of shared working spaces on a regular basis the only difference is that these are closer to home outposts for their employees so typically you know we work is located only in big cities so these are uh shared working spaces you know which are uh which are uh based in smaller loca locations smaller towns not surprisingly you know there is this company in the us called industrious and some of you would be knowing so on one side we work is struggling after the pandemic industrious which really which actually sh uh, provides suburban uh, suburban co-working spaces they are doing very well and they have actually planned for an ipo in 2021 and this con this this concept of bringing office to home was also being talked about by uh, raman roy you know i was listening uh, to a, a webinar the other day so you know there are these interesting conversations which is happening what they what people are telling that people will not come home they can work from anywhere so so it's no more about working from home what people are essentially talking about working from anywhere and what they are telling is that we will bring office to wherever they are today and what they are also talking about that today if you are talking about talent pool it's just not big cities going forward you know you will see the talent pool being tier 2 and tier 3 cities so just to summarize uh, the the 16 practices which we discussed state how your business will navigate the crisis restate your vision understand the nuances of context make sure the team is physically set up for success help staff to understand where to focus their time six set ground rules around channels seven send messages that emphasize we and us eight ensure regular messaging from top nine keep critical uh, me uh, messages simple and actionable uh Tenth, highlight the do's and not the don'ts. Eleventh, don't communicate stress and helplessness. Twelfth, engage employees uh, in solving uh, problems. Thirteen, three questions which every leader should ask. Uh, 
14, give opportunity to solve problems. Uh, 15, schedule time for serendipitous collaboration. 16, bring office home. I think, you know, I couldn't read this over here. I encourage people to uh, share their norms because it's not visible. I have these screens all over. So ladies and gentlemen, that was my presentation. Uh, before I close, you know, I just wanted to share that, you know, there are many references which I've used uh, and they are all here, right from Donald Sull, Josh Bersin, Lee Thompson, Jeff Iman, Nancy Duarte, Paolo Demiglo. Thank you so much. Happy to take any questions. In case if you all want this presentation, happy to, I would be happy to share it. I'll share it with Lieutenant, uh, with uh, Group Captain Vijay Kumar. I'll also put it on LinkedIn. You all can take it from there. Would be, hap would be open for any questions at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Devashish. Uh, and close the screen so that you can get on to the questions. Uh, screen, share screen. Would you like to close it? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would. How do I? Um... Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, perfect. Actually, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a. Uh, Really a fascinating uh, thing. I think one of the finest lectures I listened uh, in the virtual time and the 16 uh, lessons which you gave for leaders, uh, absolutely true because uh, when we are all working from home, I could really personally feel some of the issues and uh, your insight is really, really useful to us to realign ourselves. And uh, we are, you know, uh, there are a number of questions that come from the chat box. Would, would you like me to read it them or uh, so that we don't miss anybody? Uh, let's see how we can. Uh, now, meanwhile, let me ask you the first question, actually. You mentioned... Uh, some other question which has come from uh, the YouTube is you talked about advantages, uh, the weaker get uh, the strong effect while work from home. You know, don't do you think such a situation will also impact them because when they work, the, the weak also get a special attention and uh, they don't lose sight on some of the things which otherwise will be glossed over. Do you think it will be a conflict of interest uh, when the weak get protected when they work remotely, but at the same time it may impact the organizations? Uh, what's your view on that? Sir? So is a uh, group captain is your question that then we come to be neglected. Is that the question? Is that uh, the question? The big, no, when the big, big get strong, when they work remote. Yeah. They get exposed when they in the group. We actually. get strong. Yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, I think, I think what was being uh, c communicated in that is that, you know, when you work virtually, uh, person who's low in the hierarchy gets stronger because you know uh, it's unlike an office meeting wherein the boss sits in one corner that's not happening so from a psychological point of view you are seeing everybody on the screen so there is no hierarchy that's what i meant uh, i don't know if i could answer his question yeah yeah uh, there's a question what are the new normal and the role of leaders there need to be a clarity for the leaders to communicating with this team, especially uh, being virtually led. Can you uh, kindly share your perspective, please? Uh, this has come from Florence uh, McDonald. Uh, uh, you know, she, the questions come from the lady. Yeah. She, she so was the head I of think, HR in Indian oil, I, I, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yes. No, I think uh, that's an excellent question. Clearly, you know, leaders need to uh, uh, unlearn and relearn uh, quite a few things. And one of the areas that they really need to focus on is how do they really, really communicate effectively so that, so that you know, employees felt heard. I think that is one of the things that uh, leaders really need to uh, focus on. Uh, the second thing that leaders uh, need to uh, focus on is that they also need to run, uh, learn how to run virtual meetings. Many of them are really not aware because you know, we are old school. So that is the second thing. Third thing, you know, you also need to get adept on technology. Many of us not, are not familiar. Maybe, you know, you have a secretary who does everything from you. Today you are doing things from there. So that is the third thing. The fourth area wherein, you know, I think re leaders really need to do some uh, education, sharpening of skills in the space of empathy, because that's so important. And last but not the least, they have to be extra sensitive to find out what's going on in people's mind. Yeah, super, sir. <clears throat> now, we got a question from Mr. Uday Shankar Nadrajan. 
he says that working from home may result in health issues uh, could you please uh, put some light on this uh, how, 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 you know so that the people are quite cautious and careful in what and how they do that no i think i think that's a that's a very good observation this is already happening so if you really talk about india today you know uh, many business leaders are very happy you know uh, i mean every most business leaders are claiming today that they were anywhere from 90 to 110% productivity i mean that's what i hear uh, at least that's what their official position is but as you rightly uh, uh, mentioned mr natrajan many of them are having health issues and 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 when i'm talking about health there are two types one is of course physical health the other is mental health and this is where this is where forward looking organizations have to really work with their employees and support them in this it could be things like you know having weekly work from home uh, weekly exercises which people can work from home it could be address their mental health issues it could be things like having a platform wherein they share their concerns so clearly it's an issue i think here in india we are still not talking about it because it's still muffled but this is something which needs to be done and you know many forward looking organizations are already doing it even in india because they know that working from home is not easy i i know that many of our member companies uh, given uh, as you rightly said uh, some of the additional uh, uh, no uh, allowances to them because they use the air conditioner they uh, do everything they give them furniture allowance because many of them i know they developed some ailments in terms of uh, using not proper furniture sitting in you know, not proper comfort so they done that i i also know so many people uh, do them uh, pick up uh, yoga and meditation during this period because you have all the time that i world to do it actually and they have done it actually. otherwise you always fixed by routine is at the lot actually it's really uh, very fantastic input from you sir now the Thank other you. question which, yes uh, one of the question which has come from you charge of the charismatic e charismatic that's, that's something which is very interesting which i learned from you today and what matters is the content and the short span no uh, it's really really difficult for a person uh, when you connect virtually uh, to impress them and get the deal done so if you get some tips that how do you make that charismatic thing doesn't work uh, now now you the content works actually that means a guy has to professionally prepare himself very would you like to share some tips how one should prepare themselves for such a meetings no for, so so one clarification is when you really talk about charisma charisma has many components of course it's got your verbal thing and the entire non verbal thing so when you are talking about electronic charisma you the, the non verbal thing doesn't really work what really works is what you are telling now if you really talking about sales it's you know there are great practices what will really work today is your content so if your product is good it will sell so i was reading about this gentleman he's he used to sell robots and in the us and earlier you know every alternate day he used to hop into a flight go from one city to another and sell robots so you know initially when this pandemic happened he thought oh my goodness what is it uh, how how will it impact my sales so what he started doing he started doing zoom sales calls and let me tell you the impact what happened in the zoom sales call he not only talked about the product he also started giving demo of the robots through zoom calls so you know what really mattered was the content the product so i think what is critical for all of us to remember is if you are doing virtual selling what will really matter is your value proposition it what will really matter is your value proposition and your benefit selling you know the bells and whistles how you talk your looks may not really matter i think that is the key tip that we need to take home and the impact on this uh, on this person about whom i was talking about he said that today my productivity has gone up because the number of calls that i am doing is much much more and i am doing more sales so i think that's where i want to stop so you know e charisma would actually help for people who have content and have great product yeah oh great sir uh, okay i know in a tough negotiations uh, you know people uh, when the, the breaking points come they break it give a cup of coffee more around take them out and you know we can show some anger but all this will be really tough in the virtual uh, negotiation technique actually sir, because uh, at the time winning uh, the smart leader cannot win the content leader only can win you mean to say that sir? 
no, I think uh, uh, when you really talk about negotiation, this is in a virtual world, this will evolve. My sense, many of those tactics will still happen, but very differently, very different. Because today, if you are my customer, even if I want to meet you, you may not want to meet me, right? Because of COVID. So it suits both of us. My sense, all those tricks will happen. You know, so what will typically happen? You will go show your great product, but you may get stuck on price. Then, you know, you will split, again, come back. You know, so all those things will happen, but all in a virtual world. But if you ask me what exactly will happen, my sense is negotiation in the virtual world as a practice has still to evolve. Yeah, most of the negotiation people have put on hold actually because they say nothing to negotiate. Things are very, they don't know what to do actually. Sir, there's a nice uh, question from Mr. Krishna. What do you want to know? As it is difficult to even have once a month uh, face-to-face meetings in these times, do we have any other ways uh, teams can really feel connected actually? Uh, So, you know, there are quite a few things that, uh, you know, organizations can do. Uh, uh, to really uh, make sure that, you know, people are connected. You know, there are, there are things like, you know, you can do team activities virtually and, and that there are many, many, you know, I can just rattle out. Uh, so, you know, the, the type of things that you can do. So you can run icebreakers. So just before the meeting, you have a quick icebreaker, right? Uh, uh, then, you know, you can do team exercises. Then, you know, there are, there are, there, there are, there are many collaboration uh, uh, best practices that you can follow. So I, I disagree. I want to push back on this point that you will find it difficult to connect. The only thing is that, you know, you will have to make more effort to co- connect. But there are many ways by which people are doing it. And my sense, many of them are going to be a norm going forward. I, I want to bring to your attention. There's a company, Cabin Care, many of us uh, know. Yes. That company has closed their corporate office. They said we are moving virtually. We are going to only work from home and uh, they are looking for a tenant for the corporate office. Do you think uh, many guys uh, will fo- follow that? Uh, then in that case, what happened to real estate situation and the rental value will come down? Is, is a totally a cycle. Do you think many companies will follow suit of what Kevin Care has done in a bold move? No, I think, I think uh, Group Captain Vijay Kumar Ji, as I mentioned earlier, it's already happening. Uh, I talked about uh, uh, Clicks Capital. And so, uh, you know, uh, Pramod Basin, the earlier CEO of Jack uh, is the founder of Clicks. So what they say that 50% of real estate they have given. Similarly, it's happening with other companies in Mumbai. So it is clearly happening. So one of the impact of this entire COVID-19 would be two, three things. It will have an impact on real estate. I'm not an expert in real, real estate industry, but it will have an impact. Second, it will actually bring down cost for the organization. Third, which we often don't realize, there will also be change in employee salaries. So, you know, if the thing that we are talking about uh, uh, work from anywhere, so the salary that I get paid in Mumbai versus, uh, versus, you know, if I'm working from, say, a place like Rachi, doing the same work, the salary is not going to be the same. So, you you know, these are the things which are already happening and you will see it happens. So clearly, real estate is going to get impacted. People are giving up offices, many of them. Super, the way we are going to work will totally change. Uh, there's a question from Amrita Lakshmi. She wants to know how to be assertive in tough uh, situations like the pandemic. <laughs> Why to be assertive? How to be assertive? How do we, how assertive. Do we, how, assertive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, the, the same rules you know, that you do physically uh, would apply here also. The same techniques of being assertive will apply here also. I don't see any change because I think from where uh, Vanalakshmi is coming that if you're not physically there, you can't be assertive. Not really true. You know, you can demonstrate assertion but by the way you talk, by the way you communicate. So my sense, it'll still happen. Because finally, people are going to interact in teams and the teams are going to happen in a virtual world. So the way you did it in a physical world, you'll continue to do it here. So the same techniques are going to get followed here. I don't see any changes, uh, uh, Vijay Kumarji. Yeah. 
super sir uh, in fact i got another 7 8 minutes i'll try and squeeze in as many questions as possible to take the best uh, from you for the benefit of a large number of viewers more than 1500 viewers are watching this program live on uh, youtube facebook uh, and also webinars uh, so one of the questions come from youtube viewer what he wants to know is a big portion of our revenue uh, came from in person events like trade shows uh, so what do we do sir after your presentation they are shattered i said what do we do <laughs> yeah no no this is a and and uh, you would remember in my earlier presentation which i gave on customers uh, one yeah. of the things one of the industry that is clearly got impacted is conference trade shows right so you know uh, what they are essentially looking at is how can you really do it virtually so people are talking about virtual conferences right uh, uh, so you know and they are talking about technologies like xr vr so you know how do you really use virtual reality to hold conferences so there are quite a few global conferences which happened over the last 2 3 months all virtually right and one or two of these it companies they have used technologies like ar vr xr to make it happen so those are the type of things we will have to look at so if you really look at the conference industry and i i was quite amazed you know some of these conferences and these are typically sponsored by big companies i see when they are happening virtually they are still getting sponsored because finally you have the same number of people rather you have more number of people joining in virtually because no need to travel tra travel and what these companies finally need are the the details of the potential customers so they get it so rather virtually when you do it you'll have more number of attendees and uh, and that can really be beneficial for sponsors because in a single go you can actually get in touch with larger number of audience super sir in fact you are it's a little bull, bullseye actually because from the mma perspective we got about 3 400 viewers for some of the events we have been doing earlier but now i get the average about 1500 2000 people attend we go to 18000 people sir i mean that shows the power of uh, digital the reach uh, once people get glued and attracted they continue to come and i think in our mma agm we are trying that virtual one uh, let's see oh, how wow. it works if we want to you know we want to we are using the alter yeah and we are to showcase that actually the speaker is speaking from the stage and moving around and all that let's see we yeah. go, want to get that feeling sir there's a question from again from facebook comment guru what do you want to know sir my sales team is older and not very tech friendly so what can i do to help them to adjust under these difficult uh, times uh, and some leadership lessons you would like to share sir? no i think you know uh, if your people are not tech friendly there are uh, uh, quite a few things that you need to do i think uh, and and just just not if they are not tech friendly i think all organizations need to focus on the following skills the first skill that you need to focus on your employees being able to use technology that is one second focus on communication now when i'm talking about communication <laughs> just not oral communication i'm also talking about written communication why written communication suddenly has become more important because you know you will be sending more emails that's the feeling that have uh, that uh, one uh, feels third as i said earlier how to run virtual meetings that is the third skill the fourth skill is around empathy emotional intelligence the fifth skill is around listening the sixth skill is around prioritization right and the last one which is very very leadership led learning how not to micromanage because you know in a physical world <coughs> micromanage you know you can get away with it but if you do it in a virtual world it can really demotivate 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 employees so these are the seven eight skills which i believe every organization including this gentleman's company need to focus on <clears throat> i'll take two last questions sir, before we let you yeah. go uh will we allow employees to visit our customers and suppliers in person or should we try to limit face to face interaction in the workplace via increased virtual meetings what uh, about those people who want us to visit them what milestone should we look for allowing such a change of these policies in future how do you handle such a situation when the customer says we please come and visit No, so first of all i think uh, uh, it has to be driven by what the customer wants i think that is the rule number 1 we will have to remember and the first thing you have to see if you can convince 
if it can be done virtually. Today, even aeroplanes are being sold virtually. And I talked about it in my earlier presentation. You know, everything is urban virtually. People are really not visiting. So even inspections are happening virtually. So first, you have to see what the customer wants. Second, try and convince the customer, uh, you know, if it can be done virtually. But, but there are cases you still need to go, right? Of course, then you will have to go with all the precautions. Because when we talk about virtual working, there are still so many things which will still will happen in the context. For example, people working in the factory, people working in the warehouse. I think those are the things which will continue to happen. I think all that you need to do, you have to see how can you really make it more and more touchless. I think that would be my advice. Yeah. And a few last questions. Uh... One thing is you also spoke about distraction at OBS. And uh, many people, especially from IT sector, it's a young couple, uh, they have a small uh, child or two, two children. And uh, wife in the conference call, husband in the conference call, all through the wife, they have to take care of the house too. That so much of stress is being put on the couple as well as the child or children at home. Now, what is your advice in this circumstance as a leader how do we take care of things if the client the, want to request, sir, can you stagger the calls between husband and wife? What do we do? Uh, you know, do you think some mechanism, what can be worked out to make sure the work at home is a pleasurable uh, for the couple, especially in couples? No, I think, uh, uh, and I, I think if you, uh, if you just remember what I talked about, uh, I think it's, it's on the organization, the employee to make sure, you know, there is this mental separation between work and the rest of home you know the, the employees have to make that possible number one number two i think you know one of the things that i said one of my lessons is share the norms what this essentially means is you know you should really reach out to their employees and ask when they are available and when they are not available so if there are times when they are not available please factor it in your schedule because when you do that, you will not only get the sense of belonging of your employee, and, and, and I'm very confident that employee will make sure she works extra hours and completes the task. So it should be done. So just to repeat, share the norms, as I mentioned, and you know it's on the company to make sure that we create that mental separation. And how, we do, how to do it, I talked about earlier. The number of accolades that come which you are reading yourself, I'll send you the printer of this. And then also a question has come from Rupesh. Two quick questions have come. I will we'll take, I think we got another three, four minutes to go, sir. Uh, it was an excellent presentation. My question uh, is how to manage the work-life balance during work from home. It is not always so easy to switch off and switch on, pay attention to our home life when our work life is always present in the other room. Yes, I just now asked this question. I think... Uh, <laughs> He took it. Would you like to add some uh, thing? What you already answered this question. Would you like to add anything more, sir? No, no. I think I think no, no. I think there are many things to add. I think first of all, we need to remember that this is the way of life going forward. For many of us, there's no getting away. So we have to find out a way. So what are some of the suggestions that I have? First of all, please make a routine for yourself. Right? What you will do, what you will not do, and as a group. Captain Vijay Kumarji would tell you, please take out time to exercise every day. And you can do it from home itself. You can do yoga, you can do some walking, all at home, right? It does, doesn't need a big apartment. So that is the uh, first thing uh, that uh, you need to do. The other things that uh, you also uh, need to do as far as uh, work life, uh, uh, what was this question? I just lost. Uh, uh, how to manage work life balance during uh, yeah. work from home? It is not always easy to switch off and switch on and attention right, right. to our home when the other person is working other room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So first, I think please make a routine. Find out, make take time time out for exercise. Second, you know, try and get disciplined. For example, I've seen what people are doing. Even when they are doing virtual meetings, they get ready properly, as if they are going to office. And what you should also do, make it a point that try and close the meetings in time. Begin the meetings in time, close the meetings in time. Also make sure that 
don't try and extend beyond a certain period of time. Whatever the time that you need to work, do that. Try and complete it because finally you have to make sure you take care of your, your physical goals, of course, your workplace goals, your spiritual goals, and your family goals. All of them have to be taken care of. So I think, and the last but not the least, you have to really learn to say no at times and also learn to prioritize. So I think these would be some of the suggestions to really do that uh, work home balancing while working from anywhere. In fact, our MMA, all of the work from home, we made a policy after 6.30, 7 o'clock, we should not give a call as much as possible. We have been happy because most of the time we are busy with our, you know, event itself till 8 o'clock, so it takes care automatically. So exactly. there's a question from yeah. Surendra Sitaraman. You won't know. As mental health is going to be a serious issue, how to cope with at, at individual levels? Would you like to you know, share some tips on this, please? Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is, of course, a, a, a difficult question to answer. I think, you know, you have to really learn the art to switch off and switch on. And my little suggestion would be, you know, if you can really pick up things like meditation, right, uh, yoga, you know, these are the type of things which can really help you to uh, 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 address your uh, mental health issues. Also, you know, as uh, Vijay Kumarji just mentioned, please take out time when you will just switch off. Maybe the weekends are just for yourself. Watch a movie, be with your family. Uh, because while we may crib that we, were, we are working from home, I also believe you, you will not get this time anymore. For many of us who are working from home, it is just for some time. Because while many would continue, and many of us would also go back. So try and use this judicially and to address mental health issues. Meditation is a good idea. Yoga is a good idea. And of course, you know, uh, any other exercise, spend time, play with your children. These are some of the things, you know, which can really help you out. And very, very important. If you have problem, please reach out. Like if you have depression, there are numbers, please reach out and good organizations are taking care of it. So they have helplines, emails wherein people can really reach out. Super, sir. The last question for the evening, genuinely last question because it has come. I don't want to disappoint the gentleman who asked this. Mr. Ravi Shinde, you want to know, do you think work from home uh, would have an adverse uh, effect on the employees and create a way for work as serpentious environment fades away, which you brought it out and uh, how do we handle such situations? The creativity will get killed? What will get killed? Uh, you want to know uh, work from home have adverse impact on employees with a creative mind, sir, because uh, uh, yeah, you okay. all the time you are, uh, as you mentioned, the serpentious environment fades away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, my sense is when you really talk about serendipity and when you talk about collaboration, innovation, I think while, of course, you will meet virtually, you will have to have those regular meetings. You'll have to have those regular meetings. Uh, to to make it happen. So you know, where, uh, 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 there are the there is this research wherein they have found when you really talk about work from home, there are some jobs which are really not amenable for work from home. For example, research and development, right? Uh, innovation, because you know wherein you need to meet with people, etc. So you know the type of model that you may have to look for that maybe in a week, two days work from home, three days in the office. You know, that sort of hybrid model you'll have to look for. But I agree, if it's complete work from home, innovation may get impacted for sure. So today, you know why people are not talking about it? Everybody is just bothered about productivity, you know, things falling in place. But, you know, when people really talk about innovation, etc., for those type of roles, people would have to meet. You will have to have an office, you know, of course, with social distancing, etc. And, and I, I, my sense, accordingly, people would, design their offices. Super, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I think we have come to the end. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating evening as usual. Devashi is really fantastic to hear insight. You are so invigorating. And uh, I, I think your insights are thought-provoking. I know it would have kindled the thought process of many 
to relook at the whole way they are going to work at least i got so many points of the 16 what you shared for leaders i am quite sure many leaders will have a revisit again some of the practices what they are playing and what they are practicing and thank you so much uh, for sharing this uh, and is uh, as usual uh, uh, wonderful to be having you with the mma and uh, thank you viewers you are coming a big number uh, to watch this program as i mentioned to you don't miss uh, we look forward to seeing you day after tomorrow evening to gautam maguja at 6 o'clock in the evening webinar and only on zoom it's not available on facebook ring we, why i'm repeatedly telling you again not to miss he's one of the outstanding speakers in the world i think is worth uh, the same team thank you so much stay safe and uh, stay healthy keep learning and i think one more session of learning is there today we are going to bring you more lessons to you virtually uh, because we'll meet very soon as soon as uh, the social distancing is there we we'll love to have you but the virtual will also go uh in face to face meeting because that is one we are looking forward to each one of you have been telling me and looking forward we'll do that and see you at the agm and uh, that we'll also try and bring you some of the outstanding speakers going to be speaking to you including vikram kirloska um sanjay kirloska thank you so much thanks again uh, devashish lovely having you with us uh, till we meet again bye bye good night stay healthy and stay safe very very important uh, people in metro cities like delhi mumbai and chennai i think we have to really take care of our things so that uh, uh, stay keep maintain follow all the rules and regulations so that we stay healthy and safe thanks devishish once again uh, it's a fantastic have you with us again i'll keep in touch you for our joint endeavor we really look forward to your continued support in mma and this activities thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you ladies and gents it was wonderful bye bye